All right, we want to take a few moments to tell you about one of our very good friends of the show, Aligned Health Center. Aligned Health Center is the first chiropractic biophysics clinic in Northern Ohio serving patients in Westlake. The team at Aligned Health Center helps patients with back pain, neck pain, migraines, ADHD, digestive issues, sleep disturbance, whiplash, scoliosis, and much more. The mission at Aligned Health Center is simple, to help people in Westlake and Beachwood areas achieve the best possible health and overall wellness. They know what it's like to have constant neck and back pain. It's no fun, and they're here to help. And as a special offer for the Orange is Orange listeners, that's you guys, Aligned Health Center is offering a free exam to our incredible fans. That's right. Free exam at no cost just for you. So give Aligned Health Center a call at 440-230-6865 or visit their website at alignedhealthcenters.com to make an appointment and to learn more about how Aligned Health Center can help you. Make sure you mention Orange at checkout to receive the free offer. Again, that's 440-230-6865 or visit alignedhealthcenters.com. Part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Run, William, run! He's got blockers in front! Five! Touchdown! Joshua Krebs turns disaster into a score! Okay, block! They block the kick! Welcome into the Orange is Orange or Cleveland Browns podcast. Say it, Tyvis. I'm Holly Wetzel, and he's Tyvis Powell. Thank you <laughs> our producer, Taj. So, how about those Browns? <laughs> is that, is, okay. Well, we can start it that way if you want. That's fine. Um, how about those Browns? How about that 23-20 loss? How about to... that? You know, ow, I hit my elbow. Well, you know, Holly. Do you know? Did you hit your, did you hit your funny bone? No, it's not the funny bone. It's just the elbow. Do you know why it's called the funny bone? Because it makes your arm feel funny. Yeah, but do you know what the bone is called? The Tyvis bone. The humorous bone. I was Seriously. Close. I was close. Isn't that, isn't that funny? The humorous bone. I like that. Right? That's why it's the funny bone. <laughs> Look at you. You, you in, uh, what is it called? Anatomy? Or, what, is that the right word? What's the um, word for the, for the body when you're looking at the body? Yeah. Is that what it's called? I think so. Oh man, look, I didn't guess. Anyway. I don't know. I mean, sure. Bone uh bones. Uh whatever. Anyway, we talking about the brows. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the brows. Yeah, well, uh not people are here to listen to the brows, not our bodies. <laughs> um yeah, the 2023 loss. You know, it was just a typical it's just been how the season's been going. You know, they got to find a way to finish games and and it was sad because Every game this season, they went into the fourth quarter, and I'm just like, oh, they got this. Like, it's it's pretty much in the bag, and they always lose in the last couple of minutes of the game. But this one was different to me because of the, of the magnitude of how it happened. Like, they literally – the Falcons literally ran the ball down our throat, and I, I couldn't believe it because – like I've never really been a part of a, a team or a defense where a team literally finds one thing, which is running the ball mm -hmm. and consistently just runs the ball and nobody stands up. And to me, it was the first time I looked out on that field and I was like, man, they really miss Anthony Walker and they really miss Miles Garrett because yeah. they didn't, it was no voice out there. Like if you got a leader out there, like leaders hold players accountable and responsible and, somebody somebody should have stood up and I don't care if you had to call a timeout somebody should have stood up and said listen we're not doing this like like bro we professional athletes we done bust our a we're not about to go out here and get manhandled by these dudes like somebody should have stood up and put an end to it all it literally took was one person to beat somebody on the line and make a play in the backfield and it would have put an end to it they would have had to start throwing the ball or they it would have put a wrinkle in their offense they never did anything it showed no resistance and that was just so sad to see because like that's something you see in like high school maybe like like small level college ball but I've never seen the NFL where somebody gets blown off the ball and they literally run the ball all game now you can people go back to the Patriots and the Bills last year but that was weather conditions this is this was in a beautiful day in Atlanta like and they it's like the play caller for Atlanta in the just, dome he literally <laughs> took the he literally took his play sheet, threw it threw it down to the ground, threw it to the side, and said, "This is what we doing until they stop it." And they never stopped it. 
And that is just so alarming to me. I seen today that the Browns defense is ranked 30th. And somebody tweeted me and was like, okay, Mr. Professor, why are we ranked 30th? And I'm like, dude, you bust, if you're going to bust coverage in games and give up big, big plays mm -hmm. and you can't stop the run, you should be ranked 33. And there's only 32 teams. Like, so – to me, it's just they got a lot to fix on the defense and, and people as quickly to point to Joe Woods. And I guess he would be the face for it because it starts with him. But like I, I you definitely seen that Anthony Walker was missed and you definitely seen that our depth at the D line is not as strong as I thought it would be. Um, and I want to actually, I'm glad that um, you brought up Miles, too, because I, I do have a question for you. Um, but I want to take a step back because I. This game was, it was a weird game, right? And I think it's been a whole, the whole season's been weird. That 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 goes without saying. It's off season, weird, uh, just, you know, this season, every game, I feel like, you know, we got lucky in that first game. You know, I I, I feel like, I was going to ask you this too, um, what are we, what our record says we are, right? Bill Parcells, are we? And I feel like, Really, we should be one and three, in my personal opinion. But, um, you know, the two games I thought we would lose are the ones we won. And then the ones that I thought we were going to win, we lost. But um, but going back to how weird the season's been, uh, it, it just feels like there's no real rhythm right like you've kind of, you kind of touched on that a little bit when you started. It's just no one's really taking control. There's no consistency. Um and we we seem to just go out there and everyone's kind of just looking at each other a little bit of what what the next move should be um and and really not actually thinking about what it should be what the feel of getting the feel of the game you know uh Stefanski on that fourth and three not even looking up right like from his sheet like there was it, there just seems to be and that could I, I actually want to talk to you too about his game management but <laughs> um and not his play calling but got the a game lot of questions for me i tell you that <laughs> i do i know i know i'm like all over the place right now um i'm not following really what i wanted to but uh but the game was it was a, it was a weird game you know we had a good you know on the move the first drive um getting some different targets involved early um nick chubb you know despite it all had a great game end up with 118 yards and a touchdown on 19 carries and then we made it to that two yard line and we just, we crumbled. Right. Um, and on that third and one is when Chubb was taken down. Um, and then the fourth and three, the, the just going for it and not even looking up. So I just feel like, um, I guess Tyvis, let's start there. Let's start with the game management. Are you, do you have faith in Stefanski right now from a game management standpoint? Yes. Listen, I'm not one of those people that fall prisoner to the moment, okay? And that's that's where a lot of people are right now. Everybody, you feel like, like that that would be a prisoner of the moment? Yes, because this is well, we say I don't, game, but game management or game or play calling? No, no, one? game management, not play calling. Okay, game play calling is is prisoner of the moment. Yes, game management. I, he's an aggressive guy. Like, he's always been aggressive on things like that, and it's. And and it, the thing is, uh, what it is to me is it it tells me that what he he has a lot of faith in his guy in his team, and that's he does, and yeah, like, and Jacoby too. Mm -hmm. You want that's what you want your coach to do. You want him to always have faith. You got to trust your guy, and you know, like some of the decisions he made, like the first one where we was on the goal line, and I don't know why he passed the ball. Like I say, to me, I watched the whole team get a. Uh, separate be segregated because <laughs> they threw a ball they threw a pass on the one yard line and it got picked off and the rest is history so i i've never been a fan of it since that day especially when you got it's really similar we got when you got the, the type of run game that you got you know you gotta you gotta go with your bread and butter at times and it seems like to me he kind of got away from that you know he kind of wanted he trusted jacoby just a tad bit too much and you know that and like I said, Jacoby Brissett's been playing well, so I, I get why. But at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta go with what you know, and you, I think you put a little bit too much faith in Jacoby Brissett on there, and he should have ran the ball. 
but yeah and it proved that what he's a backup right like that that's that's the, well, the bottom it, it line definitely it definitely you know what though i definitely i can't remember if i said it on this podcast or if i said it on the cleveland show but i kept saying the real test for me to know what jacoby Brissett is because it's easy because he got this run game going and and it's it's really clearing up a lot of things for him so it's easy for him to make the reads and make the throws is when when they go down by 10 or 14 points or when he got to lead that that them troops down the field for a game winning drive that's when you truly tell how good a quarterback is because the great ones find a way to get it done like if the if Jacoby has to throw the ball 30 plus times i think that's when we're in a, a situation where it's not good yeah like we might be with the chargers well, yeah, well, no, you don't have to be because if you run the ball, <laughs> if you run the ball successfully, you can clock manage this thing yeah. and really limit just to her. But that's, you know, that's another story. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, I just, like I say, he, he's a guy that got too much faith in his guys right now. He And he gets away from what he should be doing. And that if he, if he stuck with what he know, then I, he would be, the game management would be perfect. He should, at this point, until you get your, your quote unquote star quarterback, your job is to keep the ball out of their team's hands and, and run the clock. That That's simply yeah. what you should be doing. But like I say, it's other things going on. Well, you know, and I get, you get people that are like, well, <clears throat> you know, they wanted, you know, don't get cute. And which I agree with the season because last, but last year they're like, well, Stefanski, um, you know, played it too safe and didn't get, you know, too creative. And it's like, well, this is a whole different situation here. We, we're we not trying to get cute with Jacoby Percet. We can't get cute with Jacoby. That, that's we that we know that where it's a survive ready, to see to another game. Him. The quarterback went even when Deshaun got back. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I know. I, I guess that all got put to bed. Not me. That all got put to bed. Uh, yeah well now people are now calling for doubts it's it's amazing i just at this point they have to it's 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 they got to survive but week after thing. week and but we're this, not and it's yeah. it's it's and you can tell that i at least from my opinion that stefancy yeah there, there's certain across the board there just seems to be no real discipline it seems to be no real um camaraderie i mean i, I don't Not know and then i think and then you look at the defense right all right miles is out another question for you as a player miles we're learning a little bit more about his accident right clearly he has a speeding problem clearly <clears throat> who knows if he saw an animal or what the deal was i don't know it doesn't really matter at this point i'm glad he's okay that's the most important thing but are you frustrated with him from a player standpoint because of him and his impact on the field every week and doing something that could be seen as reckless and dumb when it wasn't necessary. Are you as a teammate frustrated with him after a loss like this? I'm frustrated with him because of the simple fact that it seems immature. And to me, he don't see the big picture of things like he he's prisoner of the moment. And it's it's very selfish of him. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're glad that he's OK, but like it's it's selfish because I like, do. You know, the situation that we in, yep. you know, that we 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 with a backup quarterback and you know that coming into this season, we talked about how this defense was going to be the heart and soul of this team. And, and you did. It's kind of like you just kind of forgot about all those things because you wanted to speed. And like I say, probably 90 percent of the times. You probably you do it, you do it all the time and you probably nothing happens. So you don't think nothing of it. But you gotta think about like, man, I gotta in this situation we, we before this all happened, we were two and one. We've already lost the game that we shouldn't have lost. And we gotta do everything we can to win as many as we can until Deshaun gets back and we can, you know, run our offense like we want to. But he made a he made a, a decision to go speed and put himself in harm's way and basically he handicapped the defense and it was it was clear as day that the the defense was handicapped without him out there and i'm frustrated because this is like you are you the you're a captain on this and the leader of this defense and one this one bad decision has made you to where now we got to play these games without you and we really freaking need you like yeah hey, last, last game was a clear example how much we really freaking need you out on that field 
So now we got to figure out, I don't know the severity of it. I don't know how long he's going to be out, but now we got to find a way to get it done. Now, not only are we handicapped on offense, we handicap on defense now. So yep. it, it, that, it is frustrating when you look at it from that standpoint. And, and you know, they, they got to find a way to figure it out. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we all in the league for a reason and we got to find a way, you know, Joe Woods got to get creative and find some way to, Stop that run because everybody's going to watch that tape from Atlanta and everybody's definitely going to try it, especially if that same lineup is out there. But, yeah, I'm a little frustrated with Miles. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that you said that he is a prisoner of the moment. And when I really think about that, I really agree with you. I think the things that have happened to him in his career and being here has really proven that he does get stuck in situations. I mean, the guy wore a freaking uh, – um hey cape to the post game right he called out fans like it's it's weird he there's these little glimpses of things where i'm like what in the actual f are you talking about what are you doing like Mm -hmm. it makes no sense and those roads by the way side note about that accident i grew up in medina county and it's 55 on those state roads with that that uh, there's not even a speed limit posted there it's pitch black at night even though i know this wasn't at night um a ton of hills and stuff like you have to be careful you cannot speed on those roads now i know why my parents are always freaking out when i was in high school driving on those roads because they're not they're not safe so it's just you were speeding in high school no never okay (laughs) please now Ah! i was the most non-problem child on this planet let me tell you okay i'm a speeder but i don't speed like that like, well, I get road rage. You know what I get road rage about? People that are very uh, rude on the road. You what know? Do you, what do you mean? Elaborate. Like, um, people that don't wave when you let them in. Drives me nuts. People that cut you off. People that, um, especially when you're trying to merge on the highway, I'm like, merge, merge. You know what I mean? People that beep at you right after the light turns, right? And you're like, can I get like move my foot to the pedal? Or someone that, um, when you're already speeding, is already then on your ass even more. We, we talked about this the fast lane situation. Oh, the highway, yeah, you gotta. You, if you ain't going ten plus, you gotta get out. You gotta go ahead and move to that middle lane. <laughs> and they don't pay attention to um, street and uh, when the light changes because yesterday, for instance, I was running, and I run on some very um, uh busy intersections but i run on the sidewalk come on now i'm safe and um like i will get stared at when the walking sign is on and people still just go look at me i'm like do you not see me but you do see me anyways i'm gonna go off on a tangent i get bad road rage even if i'm running or i'm driving but miles prisoner of the moment i think you're totally right about that and i and when you think about that now i mean he really has been um, and I wanted to know from a player standpoint, how they're feeling. And it's, it's crazy. Cause you know what, two weeks ago, they called that players only meeting and stuff. And like, here we are. I just, I feel like there's, like I said, there's no real rhythm. There's no real consistency. There's no real game management and taking charge. Um, you know, and this is where I feel like it goes analytics by the way, to, into instinct and intuition and i feel like we rely too much on on the analytics of things just overall in a lot of different facets um and and not just for the feel of the game and the feel of what's going on on the field the feel of between the players and and what's happening and and the trust right i think that there's so much there that we just don't have like and i don't i i don't know what the answer is to, to get that back is it looking back at the preseason and and making different choices in the preseason everybody, right everybody like it goes back to the it really bothers y'all how much they don't play in the preseason well because i think like that, that there's so much chemistry that has to be built there especially with with new guys especially in a situation that we were in with um the just the the massive uh question mark with deshaun like you know what? And you know, pause it right there, right there. You know what? After watching these games, particularly this Atlanta game, do you think the way they played that even Deshaun Watson could have won that game? Do you think it'd have been different if Deshaun was playing? Yeah, why you don't? 
Not I mean, the way, not the way that defense plays. No. Yeah, but no. Jacoby didn't have ha, did not have a good no. game. I, I don't. That's the thing. I, to me, he had a good touchdown, but he didn't have the rest of the good game. He had three interceptions. I, I he, understand. I understand how great, how good Deshaun is, but like the way that defense went, no, I don't see it. I'm sorry, I really don't. Because if he, even if he was out there, what would it change? Amari Cooper was strapped up the whole game, so your number one receiver is gone. The Joku had a couple of catches. DPJ had a couple of catches. Okay, so you gonna put the ball in Deshaun's hands and where his number one guy's gone and everybody else is barely doing something? You still gonna take the ball out of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt? No. And then the defense is not stopping anything. Like no, <laughs> that's the thing. No, I I, I don't think it. Would well, we'd move the ball a lot quicker down the field, at the very least. What is that? Okay, but we should, if if we move the ball out of field, but we don't stop them. What? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. I don't think. I, I get. I know what you're saying, and the, from the the defensive end of things, I, I just maybe don't because I'm a defensive player. That, <clears throat> defense yeah, really you cool. always, and that's where your mind goes, which I totally appreciate and love, and I think that that's that's great. I just. Look, I don't know. I want to believe that. Yes, my first instinct is like, yes, we we would have probably won that game with Deshaun. We probably could have won that game with some of the the smarter uh, calls of. I know we want seven instead of three points, but sometimes you got to take the three, right? And and looking at who you and feeling, looking and feeling at at who you have on the field, and what really makes sense. Contemplating it for a minute, thinking about it, and as much as Brissett's been playing better than we expected in a lot of different ways. It it goes back to the fact that, that he proved to what he is, right? Like we can't play that way on the defensive side of the ball and win with Jacoby. But do I think we could do it with Watson? Do I think that he'd be a little bit more creative? Do I think he's quicker? Do I think that he would maybe find Amari with Amari being a much better, um, uh, Route runner, yes, I do. I think that we could have possibly, not possibly, we probably could have. We should have won. We I'm would not, have won. I'm not. I just in, went through all of those. I'm not in. I'm not into shootout games. I'm not. And well, that's, who is? That's just the defensive player inside of me. Like it, I know it, it. It frustrates me because this Browns team, the defense is too freaking talented to to be having the mistakes and letting some of the stuff happen. Like I said. So well, then, what's the problem? Listen, what's the problem? <laughs> what's the problem? What is the what is the underlying issue then? Because you brought up before you know we problem, started man. this pod, you, you, know you know said that we brought up this. We were talking about the San Francisco defense, and you said to me, Browns are running the same thing. So why are San Francisco successful, and the Browns aren't? Yeah, sometimes it's not the X's and O's; it's the Johns and the Joes. But nobody, so I'm saying you got to get the field. There's field. Nobody, there's there's nobody, nobody's willing to hear that. Everybody's all on this fire Joe Woods train, and I'm trying to tell everybody like, like you want to you do does the does the scheme work? Go watch San Francisco. Yes, it works one thousand percent. They run literally the same thing, and it for some odd reason they're successful, but the Browns are not. What's the problem with that? I don't know. All I know is this. This this Falcons game, I watched the dude run a freaking over route and was wide open in the fourth quarter. You turn that same tape on on Sam Fran and they run that route. Guess what? Fred Warner and everybody else is picking it up. So, yeah, like, I don't like, I don't know. But y'all, so the talent's but y'all there. are so quick to say that it's Joe Woods. But you so you look at you look at the scheme somewhere else. Why is it that they comprehend it and they can pick it up? But with the Cleveland Browns, we cannot. Like, that makes no sense to but me. But so then what is it? I'm asking you as it's a former some player, then what is it? Okay. It's some type of disconnect. And we don't know what that is. Is it's, it is it from it's, Joe Woods it's, down? And, is there is a problem, respect level? My problem with it is that nobody is willing – it seems like nobody is holding people accountable. Like what? Okay. So because y'all boys, you can't check your boy. Like that's, that's BS. Like freaking, I was a rookie. I was a rookie in Seattle. And I, if I seen Sherm or Cam or somebody mess, or even Earl, I literally would say, right. They're like, bro, this is what you do wrong. Now they, they look at me like I was crazy, but they respect it because they know I was 100% correct. Even Sherman would tell you that. He was like, you was right. <laughs> you was right, but you, you know, I ain't got no clout to say it. But anyway, it just seems like on the Browns, like, y'all see the mistakes, but nobody is, like, holding people accountable. Like, there is no voice on that defense that's coming out and saying, listen, bro, we can't have that, like, 
I, like, I, I, it, don't let me, Holly, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead I, well, I think I think we're really, missing that that it's really, vocal. It's really, it's really pissing me off, bro. I know, it, it, and it really <laughs> well, and I'm glad that you're finally actually showing that because you're Mr. Positive, and I and I know that. Um, no, I just, if it's to the I point just, now where you're where you're frustrated no, because of just, what I you're just, seeing too, I, I mean that's fans to understand like it's the easiest route. It's just like with Kevin Stefanski, the easiest thing. Oh, it's the coach. It's the coach. Like no, it's not. It's really not. It's it's the player. And if if you really turn the tape on and understand the scheme and understand what's supposed to happen, you will clearly see that it is called right. But they not doing it. So like that, that that's terrible. Like that's why it looks bad. If you can't execute the game plan, that's why people like, oh, well, we might need to, we should just run man. What? Yeah, you're forcing us to have to only run man because that's the only way y'all seem to pick up things. We are the worst zone team I've ever seen in my life for a scheme that is the easiest thing in the world. We cannot comprehend it. And that's a really a darn shame. So now you're forcing yourself to play man to man. So guess what? When we play the when we play the Chargers, guess what they should do? When you ask me this question, after we come after we go on break, they should play man 100 snaps a game because that's the only thing that they know how to handle. So and and the disconnect then. Where does it where does it start? Right, like, is it? Do they not respect Joe Woods? Do they not respect each other? Do they not trust each other? Do they not seem to not really care? I no. Do you know what it is? Like, okay, I can only speak. I, I'm gonna speak literally on the one play in the fourth quarter with uh Zacchaeus or Zacchaeus, whatever his name is. That that yeah. was the the big uh blown coverage. So what it is is this. As a as a player, you're taught 99-9 as a zone dropper. 99-9 means that it's all quarterback driven. So you're supposed to get to your drop. So for a hook player, your, your landmark is 10 to 12 yards, one yard outside the hash. Once you hit that landmark, you, your eyes is on the quarterback, and you melt with him. You go side to side with him. Mm-hmm. Problem is this. One, it's a couple of things on that play. One, this is a reduced formation. So when it's a reduced formation, the com- the communication first comes from the cornerback because he's the first person to recognize that it's a reduced formation because 98% of the times we ask in our corners to press. If it's a reduced formation, you can't press, so you have to play off. So you would say, if it's a reduced formation, you would say, hey, you tell your hook droppers, hey, alert the over route because that's – that matters to the linebacker. If it's an over route, if you can alert him and he sees that it's a reduced split, guess what? Once he recognizes pass, guess what he going to think? Oh, shoot, let me go get this over route. Well, clearly there's no communication on the play at all. So, boom, he runs the over route. These linebackers, it was a play action. It was a play action on this play. So the linebackers bit the run, okay, which respectfully they had to because they was running the ball down our throats. So after you realize that it's pass, you do what it, what we call a OS drop, which be you know because you you bit the run and then you be like oh snap now you got to turn around and go run to your zone. So as you run to your zone, if you go back and watch the clip, which I'll gladly send you, they all never took their eyes off the quarterback, so they never seen this over route coming in to begin with. If they at some point you got to say f what they are. Saying you have to be a football player mm-hmm. at some point. Like, okay, yes, I get that it is an it's quarterback driven. Your eyes supposed to be on the quarterback. Dude, look up a route. Like <laughs> the if you, especially if you in panic mode, you just turn around and find something. That what makes the whole play pisses me off the most is that it's a two-man route. It's two men running a route, and you got freaking seven people in coverage, and they somehow busted the cover. That that's pathetic, man. It's pathetic. Mm-hmm. pathetic so what it is is that they, they they're they robots and they need to be more football players right. I, I understand what you're being taught but sometimes you have to be a football player you in this league and you're getting paid a lot of money because you are a good football player trust your instincts mm-hmm. right it, exactly I think that that's that's the what I would like to pull to pull away from this loss is across the board top to down from top to bottom Trust your intuition, right? Your instinct. Um, and get a feel for what's going on for each play. I mean, like, uh, the, and, and that's for Stefanski, that's for the players, that's for the defense, that's for, J- for Jacoby, that's for everybody. And there's, 
like you said, their football players are going to put a lot of money um, and, and show some actual real consistency and fight and and desire to play with each other and not, you know, off each other and against each other. There, there just seems to be this weird. I just, it's been weird, but it, it's. I, I have to know. Was what was the communication on the sideline after the after a ten play drive of ten straight runs? Like it's know. it's not even about the playbook no more. Like this is as a man and as a football player. Like they this is blatant disrespect. Like they don't respect you at all. And and no, I, what y'all do? Go to the sideline and just look at this the surface, and nobody stood up and said, "Hey, did y'all tripping? Nothing, nothing happened like that. If nothing happened, nobody stood up and said a word." We the, we we in a, we got a much bigger problem on our hand than X's and O's. I'm gonna just say that. Well, yeah, if we were calling a team uh, players only meeting two weeks ago, and clearly that didn't do anything. Do you think we're missing? By the way, obviously we are, but granted, it was Jarvis Landry um, at the time, but he seemed to be the most vocal. He was a leader. He seemed to call the guys out for what was happening across the board. I mean, there seemed to be a little bit more of a leadership when he was here. And we don't obviously really have that. We haven't had any guys step up and yes, Miles should have been the one and not driving his Porsche. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That fast. And, and flipping it, it. But that's the thing. It doesn't even have to be. It could be anybody. Yeah, but it should be him. It should. Th- that's it. I don't it. even know if he was at the game. Did he even travel to the game? I don't think he did. I don't know. But I don't it, think so. Because I, I, my heart tells me that he would at least say something. If you're not playing, you got to at least be locked in and get your guys going. Like that, that at the absolute minimum, you have to get your guys going. So I'm gonna say that he didn't make the trip. I'm a, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I have to check the car facts on that. But my <laughs> heart tells me that he did not make the trip because somebody should have stand up and and for the fact that that John, what's up with John Johnson? Like I thought you was this leader, bro. Like, dude, it's time. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's time. I was happy. He's to getting see, paid. Mm-hmm. I was happy to see Dale Pitt and Denzel ball out because. That's the half of the secondary. With Delpit, I was, yeah. That's like the half of the secondary that's been tripping this whole season. So it was nice to see them two make plays. So outside of the face mask from Denzel, yeah. So we got, we got, we got the four back on road now. But them linebackers, which was playing well, like that first game, the linebackers played out of they out of this world. You can't let one injury of Anthony Walker, who I get is the heart soul leader of the defense, you cannot allow that to just. In the whole season, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like come on, man. Dude. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Jacob Phillips got <laughs> railroaded that game. I got, I'm gonna send you two. And hey, you know what's funny? I'm gonna send you two clips after this is over. I know that they understand these linebackers I'm talking about, understand overall because JOK covered Kyle Pitts on it earlier in the game. So I know they know, they know, like they know what they're supposed to do. But for some odd reason in the fourth quarter, they did not do it. So it, it's, when well, it's all about finishing the game, right? It's it's finishing. We know that we are not a come from behind team. We know that we need to take the lead early, and we need we know they need to maintain it. And we know that when it comes to making adjustments in the second half, we don't make the right ones. And at this point, with this season, with we're damn lucky the AFC North right now is what it is. Because if it wasn't, we'd really be in some shit. But that's the thing. like these is the games where you need to create some separation, and that's the most frustrating part is that they're not creating a separation. Out, yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm I'm very optimistic. You know, it's a good thing you're still in it, and that's what you want to be. When Deshaun comes back, magnificently, this whole team's supposed to just play a ten a thousand times better. And I, I to know. me, I We're think that's kind of I think that's kind of baloney. But that's where everybody's at. Just Deshaun Watson just magically gonna make this team a thousand times better. And I get that he's a great quarterback. Don't get me wrong. It'll be a lot of passes and a lot of plays that will get called and get completed because he's out there. But if your defense is putting that that on tape right there, I almost cussed putting that on tape right there, then it, you're gonna be in a shootout. And I don't. I just don't think that this team is built for shootouts. Not this I, one. I, I don't Mm-mm. think. Even with Deshaun, I don't think it's built for shootouts. You you literally have Amari Cooper as a as a as a receiving option, and then the rest is question marks. That is not somebody that you want to do. Well, no, a, we need another veteran receiver too. By the way, I mean that, there's, so this yeah. team is not built for shootouts. That's why I keep telling you, like if Deshaun Watson played, 
it they still wouldn't have won because it would have turned into a shootout because our defense can't stop anything. So I like I said, I don't want to be in that. I don't want people to fall for this narrative that Deshaun Watson's coming in. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk um, Chargers this weekend, and we're really getting into the hard part of the schedule here, um, going into Week Five. Um, so we'll be right back. Hey, this is Chase Smith, and I'm here to tell you about our wonderful longtime friends over at Aligned Health Center. Did you know Aligned Health Center is the first and only chiropractic biophysics clinic in Northern Ohio? There is no other chiropractic clinic in the area that does what Aligned Health Center does. Let me tell you all about them, and, and I should know. I just went to them last month, and they were incredible. From the welcome staff to the technicians and the doctors, it was an incredible experience, and I know you're going to enjoy your time there. Chiropractic biophysics is a technique that actually reshapes the spine and restores it to its original correct position. At most chiropractors you go in, you just get an adjustment and you're left with that short-term relief, but it's not actually fixing the underlying structural issues. But at Aligned Health Center, they actually aim to correct the structural issues and provide long-term relief to their patients. I'm talking about back pain, neck pain, migraines, ADHD, digestive issues, sleep disturbance, whiplash, scoliosis, and knee pain. Yes, that's right. They can even help correct lifelong knee pain. And it gets better. They're opening a huge, brand new state-of-the-art facility in Westlake. It's going to look so, so nice. I saw the floor plans. It looks incredible. You're going to love it. And in addition to chiropractic biophysics, they also offer regenerative medicine, which is a way to help rebuild cartilage in various joints and help reduce pain in places like knees, shoulders, wrists, and even your lower back. You can check them out online at AlignedHealthCenters.com. That's AlignedHealthCenters with an S, AlignedHealthCenters.com, or call at 440-385-7357. Again, that's 440-385-7357. 7357 to schedule your exam. We will put the website and the phone number in the show notes of this episode. Hey, everybody, it's Sam Amico from Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Be sure to give us a listen for all your Cleveland Cavaliers recaps, analysis, breakdowns, draft talk, free agency. The list goes on and on. Give us a listen, Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Looking for new insights on the Cleveland sports scene with a unique side of Cleveland sports history? Then you found the perfect podcast. I'm John Sable. And I'm Scott Sable, and we're hosts of the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, a podcast about Cleveland sports, but not your typical podcast about the land's sports teams. Join us as we embark on a journey of sharing a unique and historical side of Cleveland sports history with the help of some former Cleveland sports stars and other historical figures. All right here on the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. What did you send? You sent these over, by the way? Mm-hmm. Look at her. Go look at her before we start. Go look at her. The first one, JOK does exactly what you're supposed to do on the over route. You recognize the over route. You take the over route as a hook player. You go back to the next play. You go to the play after that, the two-man route. Neither one of them look for the over route, and boom, it was wide open. So they know what the heck they doing. They know it. That's what I'm saying. They, it, they, they. I don't know. <laughs> but that right there tells me that Joe Woods is teaching the right thing and they know what the hell's going on. So it's BS. Flat out. You tell me I'm wrong. <clears throat> I know. I know. Yeah, but y'all to tell me it's Joe Woods. It's hilarious, man. It, it really is. Y'all don't – people don't want to hold players accountable. And it, it, it really it, – it bothers me because I get it. I get you want these players to be great and you want to put them in schemes – and you're like, oh, well, we're not blitzing enough. We're not creative enough. But like I said, I turned that San Fran tape on. It ain't no creative shit in there or nothing. But they somehow, they get sacks, pressures, PVUs, all that. So are they players that much better than ours? Maybe. i tell you what. Well, the, i tell you what. The one thing, the one big difference. and I We're back, by the way, on the Orange is Orange. I, I want this on. So continue, Titus. One thing I harped about. And I kept saying before the season start, it's two positions that you need, but that we don't really value that much. A middle linebacker and some defensive tackles. You go to San Fran, they got some defensive tackles, and they got arguably the one of the best middle linebackers in the league. A lot of stuff gets nipped in the bud when you got a great leader as a linebacker. So, you know, that 
That to me, when you look at these two teams, you look at the Browns defense and San Fran's defense, that's the biggest difference that I see. The line, the middle linebacker and the defensive tackle position. But like I say, I'm just an undrafted free agent <laughs> that really doesn't know a whole lot. So there well, you go. And I want to, so, you know, you brought up Joe Woods again and, and, you know, he's clearly, the guys are clearly know what they need to do. Um, and everyone's calling for Joe Woods head and they shouldn't be, but. Well, I'm glad that you, did you watch, you watched the clip. I, I, I watched the clip. Yes. So, so Travis just so said, you, you agree yeah. that the first okay. clip, yes. they know what they doing. The second yeah. clip, they just completely busted. Right. Thank so you. is it, by the way, did you hear, I heard that there was a new, uh, um, defensive signal caller for this game. Did you know that? Did you hear that? I did not. It's very interesting. Who is it? I don't know. I heard that rumor, <laughs> but I don't know who it was. So wait, so Joe Woods isn't calling the plays, or he's not signaling? Signal the signal caller. Okay, so it's somebody else signaling. Yeah. Okay, that, that's fine. They, you know but, why? You know why they doing it? Why? Because Jacob Phillips is in there now. So now they want to say, you know what? We got a we got a young guy in there. He's not the he's not our leader. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start signaling the play so everybody gets it because we don't want to overwhelm our linebacker. You know, we want him to just focus on the plays. So we don't we'll just we'll just well, he's signal, not even doing that. <laughs> we'll just signal the plays so everybody gets it. So we'll take a little bit off of his plate. I guarantee you that's what the thought behind it is. Like, but you know, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Well, and so back to my Joe Witt's question originally, what was fine and if it's if it's not him and it, if it is the players and them just not executing or they're getting lazy or they're not paying attention or whatever the situation is or they're not respecting above when they're looking for someone to be that leader to get them in check why can't it be or why is it not joe woods that's a good question i i don't know if joe woods is saying anything or not that's the thing. I we are all. This is all speculation. I'm not on the sidelines. I'll tell you what, though. This game, I'll be in the press box, and I guess what I'm gonna do when the defense come, I'm gonna look right down on that sideline, and I'm gonna see exactly what's going on down there because I'll be able to see it. You can tell. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you could the mannerisms. You could tell when somebody's yelling at somebody. So. I need to see what their communication is because I was on a spaces this week and I was explaining to people how, you know, when you come off the field, how the situation goes, you know, it's DBs on the bench, linebackers on the bench and then D line on the bench. And, you know, the defensive coordinator, what he comes and he kind of, he kind of takes, says something to every, every spot, you know, whatever, if a big play happened or something happened, they'll, they'll draw it up. They'll tell you to look for this, you know, and if this happens, we got to adjust. That's when you handle it like that. I don't know. After that 10 play thing, after running the ball, I, like I said, I wish they had a camera for us to see on the sideline because I would love to have seen if, if Joe Woods was just calm about it, then, then that's, that's the problem right there. If you, if you let somebody run the ball 10 times and as a defensive mm -hmm. coordinator, you're not furious about it. That's a major concern. Well, I, I think that there's been just a lack of of I don't I want to say quote unquote outrage because it's not outrage but it's, it's reaction large intense reaction um, emotion behind when things are not going the way that they should and, and mistakes and penalties and and busted coverage and all of it. What where is that passion around this team? So that's another question. But we need to uh, move forward. Look to uh this week we have oh wait a minute before we do right have you noticed that <laughs> oh when we do the podcast that the miscover the, the the blown coverages like i was a i was uh i was a little upset about it but this one <laughs> the fact that the run thing really got me ticked off have you noticed that, <laughs> that that's a huge because because the the miscover the mr cyrus and miscover that could be fixed okay <laughs> To get blown off the ball like that is not like that. You can't coach that. Well, no, it, this there, there's no there's there's no discipline and discipline is there's so much wrapped around that word and that meaning when it comes to so many different things of in life and in sports and relationships, all of it. And it and it and playing at this elite level with these guys with 17 games. 
in the situation that we're in. We're trying to survive and just make it to next week with the games that we know we have a very large chance in winning. And to and to at least put whatever's put aside and and stop playing as an individual and start playing as a team. And there's a lot of fundamentals behind that with discipline and respect and and the whole thing and intuition, like you said, and just and just read the room. You know when you walk in a room and people are around, you know, you're not gonna make a joke, an inappropriate joke, right? You're gonna get you gotta read the room. There's gotta be a lot of reading the room going on on the field, and there's not. So how's that? I read rooms very well, by the way. I like to think I do. I don't. I go in the room and I just light it up. Yeah, you do. I light it up. <laughs> it could be quiet as as heck, and I'm gonna come in here loud and light it up. Just yeah, you will. Well, let's see if uh, the Browns light it up this weekend. That'd be nice. That would be nice. Look, uh, I I'd like to think that they do have a small chance of winning after um, <laughs> the Chargers coming in busted up. Um, they're two and two as well. Um, you know, they lost by three to the Chiefs in Week Two. Um, lost 38 to 10 to the Jaguars and they came back and beat Houston 34, 24. So now they are two and two. Um, obviously our wins and losses have been, uh, flip flopped. Um, so, you know, it's going to be hard taking on Justin Herbert regardless. Um, you know, you look at last weekend with Marcus Mariota, he had, he completed just seven passes. Seven for 19. Um, and then you look, uh, at Justin Herbert, um, and it's just a a completely different story. So, um, he could continue to throw quite a bit and this could get very ugly. So (laughs) thoughts. Well, my thoughts is this. Okay. I got a couple thoughts. One, they are without their left tackle. He's, he's gone. He's, I think he's on IR and I think he might be out for the season. So you have a weakness right there, and that's something that you have to exploit. That's the thing. You have to look at these matchups, and you have to find a weakness, and you have to exploit it. This is something that I learned from Marcus Luttrell. Shout out to the lone survivor. Um, after that, Joey Bosa is also out. So now they're out with, without a pass rusher, an elite pass rusher. Shout out to my teammate. Go Bucks. Um, Khalil Mack is still a problem. J.C. Jackson is not all the way 100% yet. He's coming off of something, and he didn't look that well in the uh, first game when he played. I haven't really been paying attention lately, but he hasn't been that looking like his old self. With the Browns, they, they got to get healthy on the defensive line. I mean, that's that, that's where it starts. Um, I think the Browns. I'm. I'm obviously. I'm optimistic. I do believe the Browns actually have a chance to not only win the game, but they can win it by a few points. Because what's the I, line right now? Do you know? I don't. But it was. Oh, I think it was think like three was or right. something like that. Yeah. But I. Sorry, they, they you. have the chance to win it by multiple points. And I say that people are gonna be looking. They're gonna listen to this and be like, "What is he talking about?" I say that because of this. Last year when they played them. They could have beat them really bad. <laughs> they, they really could have beat them really bad. But the reason that they did, the reason that they lost the game is because my favorite thing in the whole wide world. Defense. Busted coverages. It's just it's something about these blown assignments. That- also, Baker didn't finish the game, but continue. That too, but it didn't have to come down to that if it wasn't for these two blown assignments. That yeah, they- but that's good and great quarterbacks. That's fine, but... I am a defensive guy. I'm not. Uh, a, are you? I, I didn't I know. I don't control what goes on on that offensive side of the ball. I can control what goes on this defensive side of the ball. And they were playing pretty well. And they really was doing a great job of having them all contained. But then two busted coverages happened and let them back into this game. So as long as I feel like if they are alignment and assignment correct and they play with a little freaking passion, which they should be because they're going to watch that tape and be furious that they just got just manhandled like that. So they're going to come out with some fire. My only concern is that the fourth quarter, and that's where we struggle at. It's probably going to be pretty close going into the fourth quarter. And at some point you have to, you have to turn the page on this. You have to nip this fourth quarter thing in the bud because it's, it's becoming a major concern that y'all can't finish games. So I would like to say, to put the league on notice 
and to show America that y'all are here and for real, this would be the game to start doing it. Nip it in the bud. A great quarterback like Justin Herbert. You got great. You got the secondary to do it. I mean, that's why I say go ahead, go man. You got. We got the roster across the board to do it. Exactly. So so do it. If this is the game that I need, Amen. To, I need to know. We gonna know something because everybody else, all these other games, yeah, you should beat them. You should. You should. Yeah. This is the first game where you in doubt. <laughs> And you have a chance, you can put that roster to the test and you'll find out who you got. If Is your guys good enough or are they not? And like I said, they got a couple of things on offense going where they not 100%. So you need to take advantage of it, whether that's put Jadavion over there, because I still don't know Miles. I don't know Jadavion, but if they play, you need to put them on that left side and let them go to work. That's how I see it. No, I agree. I think uh, I'm. I'm. I don't know. I. I know Miles was what I think two to four weeks or something. I mean, who knows if he's. And honestly, I'd rather err on the side of caution. I don't need him running back in here when um you know he's not. Especially with what we've been seeing in the league and just injuries and the whole thing, um. So I would like to err on the side of caution, um. But yeah, no, I think this is a really big statement game for them to make to just give themselves some legitimacy this season i just we have um certainly lost in some pretty incredibly embarrassing fashion and that would a lot of it would be erased um taking a lead early um and and trying to maintain that uh because we cannot come from behind in closed games obviously um talking about the fourth quarter so what's your uh what's your final prediction <laughs> Ah, oh, that's funny. My final prediction. Mm, let's see. Let me be realistic about this thing. Browns are averaging 20 plus points a game. I think like 26, maybe. Mm -hmm. Means they have the ability to get it done. You know what? I think Kevin's so but you know, Brandon Staley is a he's an analytic analytics guy as well, so. It'll be very interesting to see who goes with their gut over analytics. Hmm. I'm going to go say it's going to be 27, 27, 20 Browns. Where I'm at with You're picking Browns to win. Yep. 27, 20. Okay. I'm not. That's fine. That This is a, this is a, I know. Player. you're free to do that. That's right. Uh, I'm going to say, um, I'm going 37, 27 chargers. All right. Well, that uh, does it for us on the Orange is Oranger. I'm Holly. That's Tyvis. And that's Taj producing. Um, say, see where we end up next week. Say with some enthusiasm this time. What? Say what with enthusiasm? The closing? Yes. I'm not real enthused. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm not. You're defeated. That that's that's not I'm a little deflated. You How about what? that? I'm deflated too, but you know what? I put the I put the air in my balloon and I'm back. Baby. We're back, baby. Go Browns. <laughs> let's let's start it. The season starts Sunday, baby. We back on road, man. We gonna shock the world.